folks, Jose here with another video tutorial for WPBasics.org. In this series of tutorials, I will show you how to take a static bootstrap web page and convert it to a dynamic WordPress web page. Using pre-made themes to build websites is fine, but eventually you will come across a situation where you need to do some customizations. Building your own theme is a great way to get familiar with how to make customizations. Have you been trying to figure out how to create your own WordPress theme? Then this series of tutorials are for you. I recommend that you practice your coding skills on a local development site. Setting up a local development site can be done in a variety of ways. I personally use XAMPP for all my development work. If you don't already have a development site and would like to learn how to set one up, check out my webpage, wpbasics.org for details. I will leave a link in the description of this video. In order to get the most from this tutorial, it will help if you have a basic understanding of HTML and CSS, of WordPress, PHP, and some basic programming skills. While these skills will help, it is not required. I have created this series of tutorials so that beginners can follow along and improve their coding knowledge and skills. I will go over each step slowly and in detail. In this series of tutorials, you will learn the basics of theme development and file structures, how to customize WordPress posts, pages, and archives. You will learn some basic PHP and HTML and some basic CSS. And you will learn how to create a custom front page using advanced custom fields. So let's look at what we will be making. First, we will create a simple blog page that looks something like this. We will learn how to customize the blog page in a variety of ways. Once we're done with the blog, we will create a custom front or home page that looks something like this. We will make the management of the front page very user friendly by using advanced custom fields. Well, enough of the introduction. Let's get started. Step one. The first thing that we have to do is to go to getbootstrap.com and click on getting started. Then click on download bootstrap and save it to your desktop. Now go ahead and create a folder called bootstress pro. This folder will hold all the files we need for our static web page. Inside the Bootpress Pro folder, create a folder called CSS and another folder called JS. Now go ahead and extract the contents of the zipped bootstrap folder that you downloaded from getbootstrap.com. Go ahead and move the bootstrap.css file to the CSS folder you created. Next, move the bootstrap.js file to the JS folder that you created. Now, create an index.html file and a front dash page dot html file inside the folder we created.
we are now ready to create a static version of the web page that we will convert to WordPress. Go ahead and open the folder BootPress Pro as a project in your favorite text editor. I will be using PHP Storm. Now open your web browser and go back to getbootstrap.com and click on getting started. Once the new page opens, click on examples and then click on the blog template. Once the template opens, go ahead and right click on example blog page in order to view the source code. Go ahead and copy all the HTML code and then paste the code into the index.html file in your text editor. Open index.html in Chrome to see what we have so far. We can see the content of the web page, but it is just plain text. It does not have any formatting as yet. We will take care of this shortly. The current HTML is not referencing our Bootstrap style sheet correctly. We need to correct this. Go to your index.html file and look for a comment that says Bootstrap Core CSS. It should be on or near line 15. The line of code below this comment needs to be changed to point to our bootstrap.css file. Your code should now look like this. Below this section of code is a section referencing an IE10 viewport hack. Let's delete these line of code. Now go back to your source code of bootstrap blog template and look for a line that references blog.css. It should look like this. Click on this link and a new page will open to show us the CSS code. Copy all this code as you will need it in a second. Now go ahead and create a folder called style.css inside the CS folder, and then paste the code that you copied into this file. Now we have to reference this file in our index.php file. Look for a line that says custom styles for this template. It should be around line 18 or so. Go ahead and change blog.css to CSS forward slash style dot CSS. Below custom styles for this template is a sec is a bunch of code for IE9. We don't need this code, so let's delete it. Go ahead and save your code and then check what our web page looks like so far. It's pretty good. Now let's just finish up some coding at the bottom of index.html. Go ahead and delete the line of code that begins with window.jQuery. We do not need this line of code. Next, go ahead and delete the two lines of code that reference IE10 viewport hack. We don't need these either. Finally, Go ahead and change the line of code that references bootstrap.min.js so that it points to our local bootstrap.js file. The code should now look like this. Step 2. Now let's take care of our blank front page.html file. Go to the index HTML file and copy all the code from this page. 
then open your front page.html file and paste your code here. Go back to getbootstrap.com and click on getting started and then on examples. Now scroll down and select Jumbotron. Right click on the page and select view page source. Copy all the code that starts at main Jumbotron and goes all the way to its closing div, like so. Copy the code and then go back to your text editor. Now go back to your front page.html file and select all the code above the footer and below the blog masthead. Delete all this code. Paste the code you copied from the Jumbotron source code to replace what you just deleted. Now go back to your web page and see what you have so far. Not bad, but it needs a little styling. The first thing that we have to do is to add a background image. Let's go back to our Bootstrap Pro folder and create a folder called Images inside of it. Now let's add our image to this folder. Name the image file bg.jpg or jpg. Select any file that you would like to use. I am using an image that is 1900 by 1268 pixels. You can decide what image you would like to use or what size you would like to use. I will post a link to these images in the description of this tutorial in case you wanted to use my images. Now go ahead and go back to the bottom of your style.css file. Let's add a comment to keep things organized. I will add a comment, Jumbotron. Now let's take care of the background image. Let's give this Jumbotron a height of 600 pixels. Let's also put some padding to the top of 100 pixels. And let's add a background. I will put a URL and it then it goes dot dot forward slash images forward slash bg dot jpg close bracket close quotations and close brackets then I will put center center and close it with a semicolon just on a side note that section of a code of the code where it says dot dot and a forward slash what that means is that the folder we are referencing is located in the folder one level up from the current folder. If the folder we were referencing was within the same folder, all we would have had to do is put bg.jpg, but we're keeping things organized by having individual folders, so we're doing it this way. Next, let's add a color of pound FFF, that's the color for white, so that the text shows up nicely. Now let's take care of the H1 section. I'll put a padding to the top of 50 pixels and a padding to the bottom of 20 pixels. I will also text align center so that all the text is centered. Finally, let's take care of the P or paragraph section. I will add some padding to the bottom of 60 pixels and I will again text align to center. Now let's take care of the section below the Jumbotron. You can see that there is no styling. First, let's add the class text center to each div with a class of col-md-4 in the front page.html. Next, Let's add the class text-justify to the first P section of each contact, 
content box. Now, let's refresh and see what we have. Not bad, but uh, something's missing here. See the footer doesn't go all the way across, so let's see why that is. Hmm. There seems to be a missing closing div, so let's fix that. Let's check now. That did it. Well, that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will take care of making the blog page dynamic. Right now, all the pages are still static. I hope you liked this tutorial so far. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like. And if you want, shoot me a comment below. Thanks. Bye for now.